Welcome to Erdessa. From a bird's eye view we can see several neighboring rivers and wetlands. Below. The geometry of the pools looms, forming a green mosaic. In the middle of this green jungle stands a modern city. Now let's take a look at how the area is rapidly changing. This picture was taken in 2003 and there are hangars, possibly greenhouses, down there. These structures always appear before mining begins in places like this. Two thousand and three, March. The buildings have disappeared, and we can enjoy the sight of the beautiful fan like geometry of the grids. A few months later, December twenty thirteen. Yes, the colors are different, but also the sediments from the pools have been removed, and we see a clean grid. Five years later, November 2018. As you can see, there has been a tremendous change. Another large area of exposed pools is emerging. There are others hidden nearby. And this is the state in November 2020. The beautiful geometry of the pools, created by removing the soil and exposing the stone grates. For comparison, let's look at one of the many sites hidden in the Saudi Arabian desert where oil is extracted. Here, a satellite has revealed buried grates among the sand dunes. Let's go back to Erdessa, another area that has undergone a major change. June 2016. This image from January 2018 recorded activity at this location. The top soil has been removed. The site looks sharied and is bordered by a water channel. A few months later, November 2019, water appears between the stone partitions and cleared area at the bottom of the image. As you can see, the two parts relate to each other perfectly. The latest image of this area is from January 2020. Later images have not been released by Google Earth. We will now look at the technical side of these grids in more detail. Here you can see the unusual Y shaped anchorages. They look very fine, don't they? But we're at an altitude of just under 6 kilometers, 3.7 miles. A lorry can drive comfortably over these rungs. One more detail. This part is still waiting to be cleaned, but the anchors are very visible. Rungs hidden in the ground in Texas. The anchors in the shape of a mirrored inverted Y are clearly visible here as well. There is certainly water underneath the entire area. Back in Erdessa, stone partitions still hidden in the sediments. A 
a general view of another area. Height 4 km, 2.5 miles. And another detail from the same place. You know what this reminds me of? Tiffany stained glass. It's the same technique the old masters used to make monastery windows. Many clues suggest that the old architecture had its origins in a very ancient past. There are sunken islands in Lake Manzala, Egypt. Very close to Cairo. Pools of stone grates are filled with aquatic vegetation. We're going back to Erdessa. Almost in the center of the town, the river circles a strange island. Let's take a closer look. There are also grates. They are torn and deformed. Many of the partitions are probably missing. Their position is revealed by the vegetation. And one special piece that made me decide to make this video. We've seen it before on a salt lake in Utah, but it was very damaged. The attached stone partitions are preserved in this picture. Here we are in another place in Erdessa. The shape is perfectly mirrored. Recall this object buried in a large salt lake. You can see that the side stone partitions were very likely anchored here as well, but they have been torn out. Erdessa. I don't think a comment is necessary. The geometry of the nature that surrounds the city. The main access road may have been built on the site of a defunct water canal. This would not be unique. The overall view of another place is incredible. New traffic roads are looming to the right, but, that's not how you build a road, is it? Let's take a closer look. They're removing the topsoil and grinding the surface. Look at this strip. It's still vegetated. But this is exactly where the road will go. On the left. You can see the geometry we're already familiar with. We'll look at some very strange roads later in this video. This mine is located near Silver City, New Mexico. It holds further secrets. Geometry of huge limestone blocks. Groundwater still seeps between the joints. Another mine in New Mexico, Claypool, hides something better. Grid geometry revealed. We're back in Erdessa. The roads are mostly part of the partitions hidden under the surface. The vegetation on the left has been cleared and we'll take a closer look. A 
their general view of the area waiting to be cleaned up. This means removing the vegetation and sanding the surface. Plants are growing where groundwater seeps. Here the upper deposits have been removed and the geometry of the paths is emerging. You can see the color differences in the ground. The surroundings of the site hide the same thing. Note the strange islands of green. Peru. In this picture we are looking at some halls, but they disappear. In places like this, rock extraction follows. As in this case. Below we see the geometry of the fields, which are covered with vegetation. The upper part has been cleaned down and something strange appears. Erdessa again. On the right is a water channel. But in the middle, the line of another canal looms. Both are part of the geometry of the grids. Let's travel a lost waterway. In these places the canal disappears and its further path is revealed by the vegetation. Here its path is interrupted, but it appears to have crossed another channel here. Empty fields are being created here and construction and excavation work is being carried out. Here you can see how the waterway nicely describes the circles. Wherever vegetation forms continuous bands, there may be more and more hidden waterways. The canal ends here, but it certainly has a continuation here until it joins the river.
This particular oval with a driveway appears quite often. The picture was taken in 2003. You can still see the beautiful circular geometry. It is probably a pool with circular islands. And this picture was taken in 2020. As you can see, the left part has collapsed or been removed by humans. Columbus, Nevada. Here, too, a satellite has discovered the same object in the rock. Unfortunately, only the outline remains. Another part of Erdessa. Grid geometry is not only found in wetlands, but also in deserts where water is hidden deep below the surface. Due to human intervention, vegetation grows here too but only in places where water reaches the surface. Taklimakan Desert Let's look at a detail from Erdessa. Especially the geometry of the roads. And it's not just in this small town. This shape resembles an eared owl or some other animal. Don't you think? And one more detail from the same place that I don't need to highlight. I'll stop with this picture. Surely you know Plato's words about the stripes of land alternating with stripes of water. And then there's the mention of the circle. But a circle and stripes are two different things. The circle refers to the continents, which were once circular in shape. Mount Olympus and the five circles. But the stripes of land and water were different shapes. Like in this picture. These are carved plates, and the grid hold these plates. For an example of stripes of land and stripes of water, we return to the Florida Rotonda. It used to be channels of water and strips of islands. One segment is missing, but once highlighted, we'll see all the beauty that is connected to the surrounding area by a geometric grid. It's like electronics, isn't it? The island of Erdessa was much larger and connected to the mainland. Here you can see it cleared of vegetation, but the edges cannot be used, they are muddy. The city is growing at a great speed. Eight years separate these two images. You can see the forests and the hills disappearing. And I wonder what all might be hiding under the Amazon rainforest. Actually, why are they cutting it down? What is the real reason? The town is also growing due to the destruction of the surrounding limestone hills. It's a huge job when you consider how high these hills go. But the work is likely to pay off with the discovery of old modern settlements. After all, God commanded to paint the slabs with lime. Something's not right here. At the top of the image is an unmined hill, but below it is a road lined with white shoulder. We can even see some kind of blocks, cracks in the ground. Road works are always done at the end. The arrow points in the direction of the continuation of the road, which certainly disappears under the hill. Trees and shrubs are also disappearing here. 
construction machinery is working deep below the surrounding ground level. The difference in height is approximately 20 meters, 66 feet. Why they are digging so deep is clear from the image. Detail from the previous image. Joints between the blocks appear. Note the roadway. The terrain is not yet cleared and there also appears to be moisture at the road site. The last remnant of a hill that is slowly disappearing. What's below? Probably an ornament. Like an illogically complicated intersection in the Chilean desert. But this one was discovered beneath the surface. It's certain that the roads were deformed by the shifting of the rock. Strange image from Erdessa. After removing the vegetation and topsoil, strangely shaped paths appear and the outlines of partitions can also be seen in the ground. However, the roads disappears and houses will be built there is on the right. A densely populated place. Stone sarcophages and traces of a lost civilization in the desert of Chile. After the removal of hills in the Chilean desert, Sharied traces of modern settlements appear. Also under Mount Kailash you will find traces of ancient civilization, but a small number. It's as if the catastrophe has hit this area with full force. One more view of the surroundings of Erdessa, Ecuador. How much more is there under our feet? We bid farewell to Erdessa with this picture. The river is washing away the limestone sediments. Probably got into the river by people breaking through pools on land. Now we will look at strange roads elsewhere in the world, as promised. This image is one of my favorites, the Chaganoogen area in the Mongolian desert. In this image, there are two roadways exposed that lead nowhere. In the upper part we can see seepages and vegetation that will be cleared. Note that although the roads cannot be used, they do have road markings. This is a crossroads that was hidden deep under the desert sand. As you can see, there are no houses standing here and the road continues into the desert towards the vegetation at the top of the image. The vegetation follows the grates below the surface. Water leak. The road is lined with layers of sand and although there is no settlement, the roadway has several lanes. Also note that it's deformed. The final resurfacing of the roadway is being done mostly after the buildings have been developed.
Taklimakan Desert. To the right is the geometry of the grids again and the roadway leads from this point. It ends under sand and limestone. Why limestone? In order for the sand to form dunes. It must have an obstruction in its path. The obstacle is very likely limestone formations below the surface. Also in the vicinity of the Taklimakan Desert there are many places like this one in the picture. The road ends abruptly in the desert, but already has road signs. And here is clear evidence that the roadways were buried under desert sand. This particular one has three lanes in each direction. Given that this area is sparsely populated, this roadway is very sized. And another catch. The lanes are still partially obscured by sediment. You can see the continuation in the lower right corner. The last and very telling image. Part of the roadway is already exposed and the traffic lanes are disappearing under the deposits of lime sediments. Another section of the thoroughfare is still being cleared. I bet there are traffic lanes under the surface as well. Do you know what they have in common? Let's take a look. All these objects and buildings represent our Earth. A tabernacle, i.e. a grid with four corners. According to the Bible, the four angels blow from the four horns of the earth. Earth's stone gridiron is the lamb's gridiron. We are all, lambs, trapped on the earth grid. A map of the earth by Orlando Ferguson. Four corners of the earth, four angels. The earth is depicted here as a hill embedded in a cube. In old texts you can trace a reference to the earth standing firmly on pillars in a pool. The earth is static, orbiting only the sun and the moon. I think Galileo Galilei may have been declared a heretic, but the new thesis suited the Vatican politics of the time. Unfortunately, this new dogma of a rotating earth has been ingrained in the minds of all people for generations. We will now focus on the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Holy Mountain in Jerusalem. We see the same, hill, shape. Can we say that it stands on columns in a pool? But the pool is not square, it is an octagon. Why is that? This place has one peculiarity. If you were to draw an imaginary straight line through the earth, you would connect this place with another, the petroglyph of the Sun Cross on the Nazca Plain. View of the mosque from above. Isn't it the same? But it conveys the same thing. It seems as if Al-Aqsa is the key of David. The sun plays a vital role in our lives. The Bible refers to the sun as an altar. The petroglyph suggests that once in a long period of time, the Earth's poles will shift so that the Earth's basin will rotate relative to the sun. Just like the key. This will cause huge cataclysms on Earth. The old truth, the Earth is a turtle on four legs, seems to be true. Manhattan, the new World Trade Center building. When viewed from above, 
The architecture of the building replicates the petroglyph from the Nazca Plain. Blue is the base, blue is the square, red is the top, red square, yellow denotes the circle, the earth, the four angels, which may be magnetic forces, and also the inner square. The green point is the location of the antenna, the earth's axis. The white line marks the sides of the octagon, and here it is the octahedron, which is mirrored. Note the 22, 5 degrees rotation of the apex from the base, just like on a hieroglyph. Half of the right angle. The arrow indicates the sunrise. It's a real Tower of Babel. Looking at Teotihuacan, it is likely that this place remembers multiple shifts. The Avenue of the Dead once went from the Pyramid of the Sun to the Sun, logically. The blue diagram is shifts of 22.5 degrees. But this is only conjecture, because the Sun also probably changed its position. The curvature of the Earth must also be taken into account. The present Vatican faces the Sun. It is similar to the temple at Teotihuacan. It celebrates the Sun, even though it is not so much in people's eyes. Lest we forget, Earth has other artistic representations. One of them is the cone. Why? Look at satellite images of deserts. Our Earth is a temple. Sacred symbolism is extremely interesting and I will return to it at some point. Finally, I'll say goodbye to the New World Trade Center in Manhattan. We enter the elevator from a cave, because we used to live in caves. The elevator takes us up and we see the construction of New York City as civilization on Earth evolved. At the top of the tower, we get a view of the present. We have reached the top of the Tower of Babel, to God. Yes, we are living at the end of time. Thank you for watching.